Amen. You may be seated if you can. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord uh, this morning. Pastor, God had to take him all the way to Brazil to give me the opportunity to preach this morning. Amen. I know he's doing a great work out there. I know, I know this man's heart, and I know this man's heart is right, right here with you. You've got an awesome pastor and certainly an awesome first lady. Would you give them a hand? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Debbie and I are honored are honored to be here. This is my wife, Debbie. Amen. If you'll stand, Debbie, this is my wife, Debbie. Some of y'all know that and some of you don't. Amen. But uh, that's my wife, Debbie. People ask me all the time, how did somebody that looks like me get a woman that looks like that? Well, if you'll change your life and do right, God will bless you too. Amen. 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 Let's just get right into the word today. Let me, let me do share, uh, share one thing with you. Um, we are missionary evangelists to the United States of America. That's the assignment we have uh, from the, our denomination, the Church of God. What does that mean? We travel all over this nation training pastors. We travel all over this nation training leaders and preaching revivals. That's what we do. We go to 29 different states. And we stay on the road most of most of the time because I believe what God has done here at Remnant, He wants to do all over these United States of America. Amen. And so, how does how how do how are we how do we make our living? Well, naturally we preach revivals, but we also have a product table back there. And I got something on the product table that that God's really burdened me about uh, recently. Uh, there's a friend of mine that's a great artist. I mean, he's a magnificent artist. He made his living as an artist for for a long, long, long time. He painted the portrait of Jimmy Carter that hangs in the Carter Museum. He's that kind of kind of artist. And and he uh, he, he got. God called him to, to preach and pastor, and he allowed me to mentor him there for a, for a little while. And I got a bunch of his prints. Now, look, this, this is paintings that he painted, and these things look awesome framed. This one is the one of a granddad uh, holding, holding a flag and praying for his, his grandson. That's actually Mitchell Toll is the, is the uh, uh, artist I'm talking about, and he, that's actually his dad and his grandson. Amen. And then, oh, that one's upside down. Then he's got one of a young girl and, 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 and the granddad daddy praying for you see the hand out to the side now why am I telling you about these we 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 got a, a lot of these prints and and God's really put on my heart that we need men we need men to pray for their children and their grandchildren can somebody help me amen we need men a 30 only 30 only 35 percent of the people that come to church are men are men. Are you with me? Now, what does that mean? If you win a child to the Lord, it's like 20% of the time you'll win the family uh, to the Lord. If you win a lady to the Lord, it's about the same thing. 20, 25% of the time you'll win the family. But if you win a man to the Lord, it's 94% of the time you'll win the family. That was God ordained that men uh, be the be the high priest of the home. But yet 35% of churchgoers are, are are only men. And that's and we ask God, God why, why does our boys grow up and not know what bathroom to use? Are you still with me? Amen. It's because they need men in their life to, to teach them. Why, does, uh, why, do you, why are we passing laws that says that you don't even have to decide your gender till you're eight years old? And Y'all, I knew I was a boy when mama quit changing my diapers. Can somebody help me? Amen. Amen. But, but people don't know that because they need men. They need men to teach them. Matter of fact, Moxley Ministries, we've got a little farm. Uh, we're putting together a, a camp for 11 to 14 year old boys without daddies we're going to teach them how to shoot a gun we're going to teach them how to catch a fish we're going to teach them how to drive an ATV we're going to teach them how to treat ladies and teach them how to love Jesus can somebody help me amen Amen. And that's what that product table does. Hey, these prints, I'll give them to you. If you're a man, I'll give them, I'll give them to you if you'll just put them somewhere to remind you. Amen. If you've got a son, get the one with the boy on it. If you've got a girl, get the one with the girl on it. And pray for your sons, your daughters, your grand. If you got both, get both of them. And your grandsons and your granddaughters. Let's get to the word of God. How many of you believe? And I'm not I'm not down on our nation because I'm glad to be an American. Can somebody, anybody glad to be living here? I'm glad to be an American. 
But by, by all sense of every measure, we've got some darkness that has come over, over our nation. We've got, when you've got people that, that again, that are, that are changing from men to women and women to men, and they're not satisfied with the gender that God gave you. Now, my grandson goes to school in Brunswick, and, and what, there was like eight or ten uh, places to check on your gender. What are you? Y'all, there ain't but two. Can somebody help me? Amen. You're either a boy or you a girl. There ain't but two, but all this other stuff, that's kind of that's kind of weird. We're killing babies now at a fastest rate than we've ever killed them before. Matter of fact, abortion is not really even talked about a whole lot, but in the state of Virginia, I preach in Virginia, uh, they, they, they're trying to pass a law that after birth abortion, if you didn't get an abortion and you're, the baby's born and you don't want the baby, they'll just keep it comfortable on the table and let it die. Let it just die. That's happening in our, in our, in our nation. Am I making sense here? Uh, uh, amen. And we've got men marrying men and women marrying, marrying women. And the whole time our churches, according to facts now, statistics, uh, our churches, the church is the fastest declining institution in the United States of, of America. Now, I know that's not the way it ends because I've read the book. And he said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I believe there's more people going to heaven than they are hell because my God don't never lose. Can somebody help me? Amen. Amen. But the fact of the matter is, we've got to get the church to shine one more time and let the light. It's not our answer's not in the White House. Our answer's not in in the courthouse. Our answer's not in the schoolhouse. Our answers comes from the church. He said. He said, judgment must first begin in the house of. God. So it's going to happen with me and it's going to happen with you because we are the church of the living God. Somebody ought to give him a praise right there. Amen. Now, I want you to turn with me in your Bibles. I, I struggled with, with what to preach this morning on this service, but, but the Lord just led me right back. I, I didn't get to finish this morning's uh, message. I'm just going to go back and preach it some more. So if you've heard part of this, if you was here early, you've heard part of this. If not, then you've heard it for the first time. And so let's just look at what God's going to say. Go with me in the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. I want to read the first eight verses of Genesis chapter 1. I'm not talking about evolution. I still believe that God came down from heaven, formed some dirt, and made man, breathed on him, and we became a living soul. Can somebody help me? Amen. And then after a little while, it seemed he gave, he gave Adam a job where Adam could work. Amen. Then he gave him a wife. Can somebody help me? Amen. Always remember, girls. Amen. He gave, God, he gave Adam a job before he gave him a girlfriend. So if you've got a boy that wants, a, that wants to date you and ain't got no job, you said that ain't the way God does does it? That ain't the way God does it. Amen. <laughs> amen. But let's go on. Amen. And so, but that ain't what I'm preaching on this morning. I'm preaching on the fact that our nation, our world has gotten dark on us. It's gotten dark. You've got wars and rumors of wars. You got, you got this guy over in Korea that's got nuclear bombs that wants to blow up America. What's his name? Ping Yong Yang Wang Wang, I think is his name. Amen. And he wants to blow up America. You got this guy that rides around on a horse with his shirt off uh, over in Russia. His name's Putin. How many of you know you ain't bad if your name's Putin? Can somebody help me? Amen. Amen. You got all this stuff going on. And the Bible did say in the last days there'd be rumors of wars and wars. He said there'd be perilous times. There'd be troubled times. There'd be times when people are unthankful. There'll be people that times when they're unholy. There'll be lovers of travel ball more than they are lovers of church. Amen. There'll be lovers of pleasure more than they are lovers of God. They'll be disobedient to their parents. All that is true. All that is true and we're seeing it happening. But on the flip side of that same coin, he said in the last days I'm going to pour my spirit out. I'm going to pour it out on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. Your old man will see visions. Amen. I don't know it's the other way around. Your old man will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And upon your handmaids and your servant, I'm going to pour my spirit out. I don't know about you, but I like that side of the coin better than I like the other side. And I think we've got a choice on where we're going to be. Are we going to be woe with me, doomed to spare, agony on me, everything Things bad, it's just ugly. Are we gonna be the powerhouse that God wants in this last day to put? Well, glory, amen. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How many of you are glad that he is Alpha and Omega? He was there at the beginning, and he's going to be there at the end. Amen. He didn't fizzle out somewhere. He's still God. And the earth was without form and void. God help us, because I see spiritually that we've become without form, and we've become void and darkness. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. Now, you can't measure darkness. You can measure light. When you measure light, you can measure the illuminas in each one of these lights. When we first, when we first uh, uh, came to came to this church, and and way back when it was empty, we came back and there was a giant chandelier. Some of y'all that was there when we when we restarted this church, a big chandelier hanging hanging right there. And you you can measure the illuminas that a light gives off, but you can't measure darkness. The only thing darkness, the definition of darkness, is the absence of light. So if the earth was void and without form, it was because there was no light. If we've got darkness in this world that we're in now, it's because there's no light. And we know that Jesus Christ is the light, but we are the reflection of that light. That's the reason he said, let your light so shine that men may see. Don't put it under a bushel or inside a, a church house somewhere. Let your light so shine before men that they may know you are who you are and God is who he is. Somebody ought to help me just a little bit. Amen. He said, in the Spirit of God, now this is where I'll be talking all morning, uh, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Notice, God moved upon the waters and the earth. Let's go on, amen. The earth was, with, and God said, let there be light. Now this is the first day, and God said, let there be light. I don't understand why he created light on the first day and didn't create the sun till the third day. There's a lot of things about God. Why did he end why did he invent a sand, a sand gnat? Can somebody help me? Amen. Amen. I don't understand a lot of stuff that God done, but I just know he done it. Can somebody help me? He said, my, his, his ways are above my ways. His thoughts are above my thoughts. I can't figure God out. He's God. Amen. Amen. He said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. There'll always be division not between blacks and whites and Hispanics, not, not between rich and poor, not between ugly and pretty, not between Baptist and Church of God. The, light, the, 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 the divide comes between light and darkness. Can somebody help me? Amen. And so I want to be on the side of the light. I'll just keep saying that. And God saw the light that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5. Verse 5 says, uh, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. He said, let me divide the waters from, from the waters. And God made the firmament, amen, and divided the waters that were under the firmament from the waters that were above the firmament, and it was so. And he said, and he called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the first day. He created, he divided, the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. Now, a lot of people, think and, and, and we argue about evolution stuff all the time and, and, and I believe as somebody said well I heard a preacher preach one time oh there's no such thing as a dinosaur well that's just crazy crazy preaching because they found one can somebody help me amen you can go to Washington to Smithsonian there's a dinosaur are you still with me amen I believe there was dinosaurs I believe uh, they was cavemen I do I believe when God kicked Satan out of heaven he came down and rained on this earth and he messed it up so bad that there had to be a flood come. This is the, the pre-Noah flood and the world was covered with water and God decided, hey, I'm not going to do it the way I done it last time. I'm not going to I'm not going to create a man from something else. I'm going to create man in my image. Can somebody help me? Amen. And he came down and breathed upon him and man became a living soul. But the earth was dark and void and without form. So he moved upon those waters. God, I pray that you move upon the waters, that you move upon darkness, and that you bring light to situations in our nation, but you also bring light to the situation at our house, in our home, in our minds, and in our, anybody here know what I'm talking about? I need some light to shine on some stuff in George Moxley's house tonight, not just in this world, but in me. Can somebody just agree 
with me by giving him a praise. Amen. Father, I'm asking you, God, to speak this morning. I'm asking you, God, to talk to us. God, you knew who was going to be here before, before the world was ever ever created. And, God, I'm asking you to use me to preach. Your, I just want to be a hammer in the hand of the master carpenter. God, a paintbrush in the hand of the master artist. God, just use me to do your will today. And when all is said and done, let us be quick to give you glory, honor, and praise. Because without you, we can do nothing but with you we can do all things. So fill this place with your presence. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Would you look at your neighbor and look them down the eye and say, you're a lot better looking than the person I sat by last time. Amen, amen, amen. Now what we saw here in the scriptures, we saw that the earth was void and without form and covered with water. But the Spirit of God came down and moved upon the water. We see where he divided the waters and there's waters in heaven and there's waters on earth. Matter of fact, if you go with me to the book of Psalms chapter 46, verse 4 and verse 5, you'll see this scripture. It says, there is a river. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of our God. Now notice, he didn't say the river made him glad. It was the streams that made up the river that made God glad. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. This is where God stays in the river. I, I, I know why I love the river because that's where God's at. Amen. Amen. But look what he says. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her in that right early. I don't know about you but I'm glad there's a river that flows from the throne of God. God, the streams thereof make glad, and that's where God is. But he goes on and tells us, remember I said he divided the waters, and the waters were in the heavens, and the waters were on the earth. So look what he said in John chapter 7, verse 38 and verse 39. He said, he that believeth on me. Anybody here believe on Jesus Christ today? Oh, come on. If you've got a testimony that you believe on Jesus Christ, just wave your hand. Amen. He said, he that believeth on me. As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39 said, but this spake he of the Spirit. Notice the Spirit, capital S. The same Spirit that moved upon the waters in Genesis, he said that same Spirit is going to be a river of living water that flows from the innermost being of people that believe on him. For the Holy Ghost, he said, those that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. I don't know about you, but I'm glad we got a God that just don't leave us to our own, but he wants to come down and move upon the waters of my soul. Can somebody again, I know I ask that a lot, but y'all, we just can't praise him enough. Somebody ought to give him another praise right here in this building. Amen. Now, what have I just preached to you? What have I just told you? I told you that the water, the earth was covered with water and the Spirit moved upon the waters and light came. Amen. I told you there was a river in heaven that the streams make glad the city of our God. And then I showed you where there's a river that flows out of man, which has come to us through the power of the Holy Ghost. Brother, will you help me preach? You don't mind helping me preach, do you? Amen. Will you stand right here and face that way? You're going to have to stay up here a little while. Is that okay? Amen. You look good. Amen. Amen. So we got this brother here. Amen. He, he believes in Jesus Christ or, or, or Pastor Caleb wouldn't give you one of them if you didn't believe in Jesus Christ. I don't think he would. Can somebody help me? Amen. Amen. But the Bible says that out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But you see, just like I, I, I shared this in the early service, I, I grew up on the Ottawa River. I enjoy uh, the river. Amen. And, and I enjoy swimming in the river. I enjoy fishing in the river. I've caught more fish out of that Ottawa River than, than you can count. I've killed deer. I've, I've hunted all over the swamps of the Ottawa River. And one day I was sitting there watching the river and it was amazing to me about this river and, and the Holy Spirit just come to my mind that this river wouldn't be a river if it wasn't for the streams up country that feed that river. So he said there's a river that flows from God. The streams thereof make glad the city of our God. So if there's going to be a river Come out. What's your name, brother? 
Josh, if there's going to be a river coming out of Brother Josh, if it's going to come out of our belly, there's got to be some streams that feed that river. And so when I begin to look at this and study it, I begin to think, wait a minute, we need a move of God. We need a move of God. Our nation has never been more divided than it is right now. Democrats hate conservatives. Conservatives hate Democrats. We've got more racial divide in our nation than we've ever had before. Before. This ought not be. Can somebody help me? Amen. This ought not to be. Let me just give you a quick thing about racism just for just for a moment. My wife, she raises when uh, we're evangelists, so when you're evangelized, you got have different streams of income. And, and my wife, I, I, I went and bought me a Labrador dog, a Labrador dog. A preacher friend of mine had this Labrador dog and said, hey, I pay my taxes selling Labradors. You ought to, you ought to buy this dog from me. So I bought the dog from him. I brought her home. Oh, she loves me and I, I love her. But one day my wife got this idea that she needs to take, instead of selling Labradors, uh, that she needs to sell Labradoodles. Can somebody help me? And so she bred Izzy to a poodle, a poodle. Now, when she asked me about it, I said no. I said, I patterned my life after John Wayne. And John Wayne ain't going to have no poodle. Can somebody <laughs> But she didn't pay me no attention, and she got a poodle dog and bred. bred. So now we raise labradoodles. That's what she, if you need a labradoodle, that's the woman you, that's the doodle dog woman right there. Amen, amen. But, but, but I've never sold a dog from the pulpit. That's the first time, amen. But, but, but hear me. I brought Izzy home, and I noticed something about Izzy. Oh, she's a friendly dog. She loves me. She goes with me everywhere I go. She just loves me, and, and I, I, I always preach you don't need to love things that don't love you back, but I love her because she loves me back. Amen, amen. And so so, so, but I notice if, if one of my brothers or one of my friends, hold your hand up there, that if their skin was a different color than mine, she would go crazy and she would try to bite them. And she don't bite nobody unless, unless somebody came up. I got a lot of friends that are African American, got a lot of friends that are Hispanic. If they came up and they wanted my color, she would just go crazy. And I couldn't figure that out. I was about to get rid of her because I got a dog that's a racist. Can somebody help me? And so I called my buddy I got her from. And I said, man, are you prejudiced? He said, what are you talking about? I said, this dog hates anybody that ain't my color. And he said, no, you know I ain't prejudiced. I'm a preacher. I said, well, that don't mean a whole lot. Amen, amen. He said, I, I said, well, why does she don't like people that ain't my color? He said, you know, somebody ain't never thought about it, but I raised her up on the farm up in the mountains. She ain't never seen nobody that wasn't your color. Are you with me? Amen. And so, I, and I got to notice something about Izzy. The more my friends came by and she saw that I loved them, she started loving them. She don't fight that way no more. You know how to quit racism? Just love those that your master loves. Just, just love the people that the master love. And you ain't going to have no problem with somebody's skin color. Can somebody help me? Amen. I don't know where I was at. Let's get back to preaching. Amen. But he said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But they've got to be streams. There's a lot of darkness on the face of our earth. Notice light didn't come till after the Spirit moved upon the waters. There's a river that flows from God. There's a river that flows from the innermost being of those that believe on him. But where's the streams that feed this river? Because it's the streams, Brother Josh, that make glad the city of our God. So when I begin to study what streams feed this river, river that flows from the believer. Oh, I'm a very simple preacher, but God began to just rattle things off in my mind. I began to look it up. Did you know your body, your physical body is 60% water? Your body is 60% water. That's a stream that feeds the river. He wants to move upon your flesh. Can somebody help me? Amen. Now, I know people that'll say, oh, you Pentecostals, y'all all about feelings. Y'all y'all all about feelings. Y'all, y'all, Y'all shout because of the way it makes you feel. You go to church because the way it makes you feel. I had a guy tell me that one day and I was having one of them bad days. Anybody ever had a bad day? And I was having one of them bad days and, and I said, well that's stupid. I said, everything I do, I do because of the way it makes me feel. I go hunting not because it saves me money on my meat. I probably got $800 a pound in every deer I kill. Amen. But I like to go hunting because of the way it makes me feel. I go fishing not because it saves me money. I can buy fish a lot cheaper than 
and I can buy all the bait and boats and motors and license and all that. I go because of the way it makes me feel. I married this woman right here. Oh, when I first saw her, she was 15. You know, man, she was 15 and I was 16 and I looked at her at the Wayne County High School. I looked at her and said, whoo, she made my teeth sweat, y'all. Amen, amen. I end up marrying her. We've been married something less than 50, 40, I don't know. You keep telling everybody you're, you keep telling everybody you're $29.95 plus shipping and handling. I hate to tell them how long we've been married. Amen. But I married her because of the way she makes me feel. Are you still? I wouldn't be married if I didn't have that feeling. Can somebody help me? Amen. Why can't I come to church and worship my God because of the way it makes me feel? I say, God, move upon the waters of our flesh. Now, what does that mean? So many people stop the river because they don't let God move on their flesh. And they keep things that God said don't do. We do them, and then we wonder why God don't move. I got to preach some hard stuff here, but I'm going to get this out the way, and we'll go on. Listen, we got too many people that are saying, why ain't God moving? And they're doing things that are, that are contrary to the Word of God. Now, I ain't thought, immediately, some of y'all thought, yeah, I got a cousin that chews. Chewing ain't good. Can somebody help me? Amen. The, a pinch between your lip, it looks like you got a tumor. You ought to spit it out. <laughs> Are you in? But chewing ain't, ain't everything. I'm, yeah, I believe that if God moves on you, you may just spit that mess out. <laughs> oh, somebody's mad at me because some of you rednecks still got a, you got a, <laughs> I, I seen a couple of you and you walked in and had a skull can imprint on your back pocket, right? <laughs> I know people that I, I love God. I love, oh, I love, I love. <coughs> oh, why did God give me emphysema? He didn't. We put it on the pack. If you smoke this, you're going to die. Are you still with me? I know the Bible don't say nothing about smoking. I said, I said this before. Only scripture I can find in the Bible about smoking. It said Rebecca lit off her camel. That's the only one I can find. Amen, amen. I know people that will say, why well, ain't God moving? They got a Budweiser bubbling over in their hand. Y'all ain't as saved as the early morning crowd. This is, this is bouncing back right here. Amen, amen. We got preachers that'll preach, well, it's okay to social drink. Show me in the Bible where it says it's okay to social drink. Well, I don't get drunk. Well, why do you drink stuff to make you drunk? If it don't give you a buzz, wouldn't a Coca-Cola be cheaper? I'm going to have to dig deeper here. I stopped the other day on the way traveling North Carolina, Josh, and, and this, this couple, this nice-looking couple, they, they were from Ukraine, but they were living in New Jersey for the last 20-something years, and their brakes went out. And so I had some tools, so I stopped and helped them get it back on and go. go and and she want, they wanted to pay us. And but I don't know, it's done. that's what Christians do, you know. And, and so she went in her car and got out a big old bottle of whiskey. <laughs> a big old bottle of Irish whiskey. And she tried, I was putting my tools up. She come over to my wife and said, here, I want to give you this. She won't take no money. She said, no, we, we don't drink. She said, no, I know you don't, but I can tell he does. <laughs> and she said, she said, no, he don't drink either. He's a preacher. Preacher, what does that mean? He tells people about Jesus. Oh, well, I'll pray for him, but he can still have the whiskey. <laughs> and we don't want it. But anyhow, she put it, she ended up putting it in my truck. And I get home, I, we got whiskey in my truck. If I got in a wreck and it busted and spat on me, I know people that would swear I was dui -ing. Can somebody help me? And so we got home. I made a simple truth. You need to like me on Facebook. You can see it about whiskey. Amen. But I done a little studying before I preached on it. You know, he said, if you want to be a king or a prince, don't drink no strong drink. In other words, if you want to be a bum, go ahead, have at it. But if you want to be a king or a prince, don't drink no strong drink. He said, be ye filled with the Spirit. Well, how? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, drunks ain't going to go to heaven. Is it this hard when Caleb preaches? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I had a guy ask me the other day, he says, now, Brother Moxley, really, how much you got to drink to be a drunkard? I said, I don't know. How many men would I have to kiss to be gay? <laughs> they said, about one. I said, a beer ought to do it then, hadn't it? Amen. <laughs> Go on. Because it's easy to preach on, preach on drinking. It's easy to preach on dipping and chewing. Because I don't do none of that stuff. It's easy to preach on that. But, oh, what about gossiping? 
Well, I didn't say it. They said it. I just repeated it. If you repeat it, a lie, you a liar. And Revelation, Revelation 21, 8, 21, 8. Liars go to hell. Liars go to hell. Burn, 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 burn. 54% of evangelical men view pornography on their phone. We need God to touch the stream of the 60% of water that's on our. If you, don't, if you hate your brother because the color of his skin, you need God to move upon the stream of your flesh. If you hate somebody because they're not a part of your church, oh, if you can't go to church with them, how are you going to go to heaven? Help me here. We need him to move upon the stream of our, oh, our flesh. It's one of those streams that makes him glad that feeds this river. Our body, 60% water. But, I, but God began to deal with me and, and just began to show me a message through this. Did you know your brain, your mind, Josh, your brain is 73% water? Oh, look at your neighbor and say, you a waterhead. Now, why? My body's 60% because my flesh can't please him. But my mind is 73%. We want him to move upon the waters. The spirit to move upon the waters. I need him to move upon the waters of my mind. Because the way a man thinks, so is he. If I think I'm a, if I think, well, I'm just a dopehead, I'll never get over, then you'll always be a dopehead. Are you still with me? Well, I'm just gay. I'm always going to be, well, you'll always be. But if I can get, if God can move upon the waters of your brain and you can realize I'm not the tail, but I'm the head. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Greater is he that sent me than he that sent the world. No, oh, those that are for me far outnumber those that are against me. I'm on my way to heaven. I've been blood bought, born again, spirit filled. I've got him in my soul. He is alive and I am too because he lives in me. You see your mind, your mind is a whole lot stronger than what us Pentecostal believers believe. We believe that's some crazy religion when you start talking about minds. But God said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need the Spirit to move upon the waters of our thinking. Oh, I know too many people that think God can't. Oh, Josh sung it. What not this Josh, but the other Josh sung it. What a go. About don't you come too late to tell me he can't do it. You say if you think he can't, he won't. But he's able to do more abundantly, exceedingly abundantly more than I think he can. So if I think he can raise the dead, he can do more than raise the dead. If I think he can heal cancer, he can do more than heal cancer. God help me because we need the spirit to move upon our mind so that we realize how great our God is one more time. I gotta hurry, amen. Our body, 60% water. Our brain, 73% water. This kind of bothered me because I couldn't find the connection because they're the same. Your heart, your heart is 73% water, same as your brain. Why would that be? Oh, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I can talk to you five minutes and tell if your heart's, if the spirit's moving on your heart or not. By what you say. I like you up here, Josh, because you're bigger than I am, and I, I need some help this morning. Amen. <laughs> Water's upon my heart. Because you see, you can get stuff in your heart that'll mess your life up. God said there was a group of people in the Bible that had a heart of stone. And he had to give them a heart of flesh where they could feel one more time. So you see, I can get things in my heart that'll, that'll cause me to say, oh, how many in this room ever had a problem cussing? Just wave at me, had a problem cussing. If you still got that problem, you got some heart work you need the spirit to move on. Well, I only cuss when I get mad, huh? We got this thing, I quit. I use King James Version of the Bible, and when I get to the word that the King James Version calls donkey, 
what, the word they call donkey. I can't say that no more because I got three grandchildren and we wash their mouth out with soap if they say something ugly. And the other day I said that word from the Bible and I had to go home and hold a soapy rag in my mouth for 25 minutes. <laughs> but y'all, cussing is cussing's hard to quit. The first church I pastored, whew, it made me, I wasn't saved long enough to be quit cussing. <laughs> really? I mean, I got saved the third Sunday night of April, 1989. I got called to preach January the 7th, 1990. I was pastor in Wearsboro Church of God, November of 1990. He didn't have much time to clean me up. He still had some feathers on this chicken he needed to singe. Amen, amen. <laughs> I'd get mad and I'd say a word I shouldn't say. And I'd go to my office and I'd God, you got to help me. you got to help me. This cussing, this cussing, you can't be cussing and be a preacher. Nobody wants to listen to a cussing preacher. <laughs> I went in my office and I wrote down all the cuss words I used. And I numbered them. And next time I got mad at one guy that kept making me mad, <laughs> one time I got, I looked at him and said, you sorry six, I'll slap the eight out of you. <laughs> I used a number system. That won't send you to hell there. Amen, amen. <laughs> But your heart will make you, oh, I know people. You, I drive in Atlanta a lot. Are you still with me? These people give me sign language all the time when I drive. Their heart ain't right. Now, I was waving at some of them the other day. Debbie went with me up to Illinois, and I was waving all of them. She said, why are you waving? I said, I ain't waving. I'm shooting them a flock of birds. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm just shooting them a whole flock. Amen. <laughs> Where's Caleb at? I'm in trouble. Amen. <laughs> but hear me, hear me. If you get this right, this changes. Oh, nobody shouted when I said that. If you get this right, that changes. If you want things to come out of you that's right, get that inside of you that is right. And if we ain't careful, the enemy will put a root inside of us that'll keep us bitter, that'll keep us, oh, I preach a, a conference called Rekindle the Flame Conference. It's spirit-filled Methodists in, 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 in Athens, Georgia. They have it at the Classic Center. Whenever they first called me to, to, to go there, the, the, the evangelist there that heads it up is Rick Bonfim. He's a Brazilian. He's from Brazil. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and he has this big spirit-filled conference. And he asked me to come and preach on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I preached a message on the Holy Ghost. There were 750 people there. And, man, they were shouting and running and carrying on like we used to. And, and it was just amazing. And, 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 and it was just amazing. And, and it, it, I, I preached. And 10 people got filled with the Holy Ghost that day with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And it was just great. And I thought I was done. I went to, went to hand the mic back to the, to the moderator. And, and I... I went and the Lord just stopped me right here in the center where you're standing there, Josh. And, and I looked up and, and I, I said, I stopped all the music and I stopped all the shouting and I stopped all the dancing. And I told everybody to hold up a minute. I got to say something. And it got so quiet. And this is what I said. I said, in my denomination, we stand in for people. And I said, I got to stand in for somebody today. Oh, it was so quiet you couldn't hardly... I mean, it was scary quiet. And I said, I need to stand in for the man that, for the uncle that raped you, for the man that left you, for the wife that cheated on you, for the man that gave your son drugs for the first time, for the person that hurts you so bad you can't forgive them. And I want to stand right here. And if you'll line up in that center aisle, they had a center aisle. I said, if you'll line up, I want to ask you to forgive me. 150 people ran to that center aisle. They was big, tall men this tall. And I said, Lord, I'm standing in for the man that stole their wife. Don't let him shoot me in the head. Amen. <laughs> but they was lying all the way back. And I would hug each one of them. I hugged me and I'd have to reach up. And they'd, pull their, they'd lay their head down and I'd say, please forgive me. I wish I hadn't have done that. If I had it all to do over again, I wouldn't. Have. Tears streaming down my face, tears streaming down their face. And you could feel it when they would release it. When they would release it. They would fall on the floor and start speaking in tongues. God filled them with the Holy Ghost. That happened time. I'd hold young girls that were, that were so broken that they couldn't even stand. I'd be holding them up and asking them, forgive me. And God would fill them with the Holy Ghost. I've seen people of all statures and all colors and all, all different people from different places. And they would forgive and God would fill them. Over a hundred people were filled with the Holy Spirit that night. You know why? 
because God reached down and let his spirit move on the 73% water of their heart and they got that root of bitterness, that root of unforgiveness. Well, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't apologizing. Oh, some, some, there's somebody in this building. I don't know who you are, but there's somebody you ain't forgave and they're already dead in the grave, but you're still holding on to it. You gotta let that go. You gotta let the spirit move on your heart and get that out of the way. Let's go on. The heart is a stream that feeds the river. The mind, the waters of our mind feed the river, their flesh. But one more, and I, I got to wrap it up. But our lungs, this amazed me, Josh, because, you know, I don't want to drown. You know, I'm thinking the lungs, you can't live without the lungs, but your lungs is 83% water. Your lungs is made up of more water than any other organ in your body. And I went, wait a minute, God, that don't make sense because if we get too much water in our lungs, we drown. But our lungs are 83% water. Why is the lungs more a bigger body of water? Why is it a bigger stream that feeds the river than our flesh? 60% flesh, 73% brain, 73% heart, but 83% lungs. And it was easy. God just spoke to me quickly. He said, I told you, let everything that can breathe praise me. Because if you can praise him, it'll start a stream in your body that'll feed that river. Can somebody help me? Because they can't nobody do you like Jesus. And he habits the praises of him. You, wanna, you want him to show up? Just start praising him. He said he inhabits the praises of his people. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, those that are, oh, good God Almighty. He said, lift up your hand in the sanctuary. He said, let the people clap their hands in the sanctuary. He said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So these streams, my lungs, my heart, my mind, my flesh, these are all streams that make glad the city of our God and make up the river that brings light to this lost and dying world. Now watch this. You can sit down, Josh. But watch this. A lot of people, oh yeah. They clap better for Josh than they did when Caleb introduced me. What? <laughs> Hear me now. A lot of people think God don't move now like he did back then. Remember, there's rivers that he wants to flow from us. How many of you remember, how many of you remember 9-11 when them people with them towels around their head running them towers? Y'all remember that? 3,500 people got killed because these people ran in them planes into that tower. Well, that caught a lot of people by surprise. Our President Bush was reading a storybook to some kids in a school, I think down in Florida. He didn't know it was going to happen. They, our army didn't know it was going to happen. The airport sure didn't know it was going to happen. But it didn't catch God by surprise. How do you know? Remember, he wants rivers to flow. Look in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is a prophet. Look in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 25, and I'll show you. Look what he said. There shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill, there will still be rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. He said when those towers fall and those 3,500 people are killed, I'm still going to have streams that I move upon. And I'm still going to have rivers that will flow. Well, he ain't talking about them towers. Show me what towers he's talking about then. I've talked to college professors. Matter of fact, the, the Pentecostal Theological Seminary has seen what we do in training preachers, and, and they've partnered with us. We're going all over the nation just training preachers how to do this. Can somebody help me? Amen. But, but hear me. I ain't found one of them that can tell me that any other kind of, I don't know what tower that is. I'll tell you what tower it is. Isaiah, is, he was pinning the words as God was giving them. He knew that they was going to come a day when those guys were going to run into those towers and 3,500 people were going to be killed. And he said, I got to remind them that there's still going to be rivers and there's still going to be streams. I'm still going to move on the stream of their mind, the stream of their heart, the stream of their lungs, and there's going to be rivers that flow in a dark and desert place. They're still. Now I'm almost done. There's one scripture in the Bible, and I'm not one to pick around scriptures. I, I preach out the King James because that's what I learned. That's what I can quote. And there's a lot of different versions of the Bible. But there's something in the King James Version that I read the other day 
that that when I got to studying it, Sister Holly, it, 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 well, let's just put it up there. A lot of people can quote the last half of the scripture, and it's a powerful scripture. It's in Isaiah 59, verse 19. Let's, let's look at it. We'll read the whole thing, but the main part is the second part. So shall, there be a, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Now look past that period. Most of us can quote this scripture if you've been in church very long. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. I read that, but I ain't never got excited about that scripture. You know why? Because the emphasis on flood is on the enemy. And when floods come, that's bad. Are you still with me? When floods come, that's ugly. He said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, and we get the idea that the enemy comes in like a flood, and God just raises up a few sandbags to save the furniture. Are you with me? Amen. But, but, but I was studying behind a preacher the other day, and, and he says, in the original text, there's no punctuation. We put punctuation in the King James Version so we English reading people can understand it. So there's no paragraphs and all that. It's just words in the original text. So now read it and take the comma out. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, comma, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Remove the comma. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. Of That's what he was saying. When the enemy starts rising, there's going to come a flood. How's the flood going to happen? From the rivers of the believers. How's the river going to happen? From the streams that I move upon the water of their heart, their mind, their lungs, their soul. And there's going to come a river. And there's going to come a mighty flood in the day of darkness. In the day when the enemy comes, I'm still going to move like only he can move. Now, what I just done is I preached y'all a message. Now, if we can all say goodbye and, and, and go home, I think y'all going to have some fun here at 4 o'clock, I think. Didn't I read that somewhere? That y'all going to have a party or something? I didn't. Maybe that's another church. If you show up, <laughs> if you show up here at 4 o'clock for a party, you're going to be right by yourself. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I think they're going to take us. They asked me, said, where do you want to go to eat? And before I could say anything, at first they said, you're going to eat? I said, look at this body. Do I look like I don't eat? Amen. <laughs> They said, where do you want to eat? I said, well, my wife's favorite restaurant is Olive Garden, but mine, and before I could get but mine out, Olive Garden's it. I don't understand. You can't get looking like this eating salad with oil on it. You got to eat some hogging bones a little like this. Amen. But any rate, amen. You're going to leave here and do whatever you do on Sunday afternoon. And we could say, hey, it was a good service, if nothing else, but the worship was good. But on we could say, God, your spirit moved upon the waters, and there was light. Move upon the waters of my mind. Move upon the waters of my heart. You know what? And I, I know I've said this a lot because I see it. Y'all, I preach in 29 states, and I, and, and I started doing this a few months ago. I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. I started when I preached revivals. I, I, uh, I asked the people on Sunday morning, to give me a name and a phone number of somebody they love that's unchurched. And I spend that week calling them and inviting them to church. And, and they'll come. A lot of them. Do you know 87% of the people that are unchurched say they would come if somebody invited them? But 82% have never been invited? Wow. Wow, that's weird. Wow. Well, that don't work. Really? In the top 20 denominations in our country, the Church of God, which we're Church of God, ain't one of them. Matter of fact, there's only one Pentecostal denomination in the top 20. And that's the Assembly of God. But there's two denominations that are classified as cults that made it. The Mormons are number seven. The Jehovah Witnesses are number 20. They ain't got no Jesus. They ain't got no Holy Ghost. They ain't got no heaven. All they got is a pair of underwear. Can somebody help me? Amen. <laughs> Well, I probably shouldn't have said that. But anyway, <laughs> but yet they're in the top 20. Why? Because they'll not, everybody in this room's had a Jehovah Witness. How, who's had a Jehovah Witness knock on your door and invite? You're like, oh my God, wow. How many ever had a Church of God person that wasn't the pastor come see you? Don't, don't chirp now, cricket. You'll wake up everybody up. <laughs> what am I saying? What am I saying? I'm saying this, very simple. God help us to let our light so shine. 
We go to a lot of schools. I'm meddling a little bit. I don't know why I can't stop right here. Maybe God's dealing with somebody. But we go to a lot of schools. I know preachers will say, you can't go to school. That's because you ain't had the spirit move in your mind. Moxley Ministries, we buy school supplies for kids in, in a school in Maine. And Maine's one of the poorest states in the union, and I go to the poorest county in that state, Brookton, Maine. And we buy school supplies for all their kids. We buy school supplies and put Debbie cakes and a Bible in there. How I many of you know if you're going to read the Bible, you need a Debbie cake? Can somebody help? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, but <laughs> we go to their school in West Virginia, Dingus, West Virginia. We bought school supplies for all their kids last year. And, and, the, and the principal said, hey, you going back? What are you getting out of it? I said, nothing. God told me to do this. Your, your school's under poverty, and we want to help out there some. And Will you come speak to them? I said, yes, sir. And I said this. I said, now, I know I can't say nothing about Jesus, but I've learned going into schools I need to be Jesus and not, not talk about Jesus. And, and, uh, and, and it got quiet, and that principal said, you don't know me, do you? I said, no, sir, I never met you. He said, well, I'm about to retire. I don't care. He said, y'all want you to come and tell these kids about Jesus. I got to preach Jesus Christ to the Dingus Elementary School. Because 87% of the people that get saved get saved before the age of 13. Why? Because after 13, we get things in our mind and we don't think we're worthy. We get stuff in our mind and we don't think he can. We need the Spirit to move upon the waters of our mind. But I go and call all these people. I call all these people that give me these names and invite them to church. And y'all, I... I, I Somebody said, you're saying too much about the transgender, the homosexuality when you preach. You'd, I would say 90% of the churches I go to, and they give me names of people to call, that I'll call someone and they'll be transgender or, or, or they'll homosexual or lesbian. And, 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 and hear me, hear me. I'm not one. God, you can't show me in the Bible where God says, kill all the homosexuals, they're going to burn in hell, they can't be saved. You can't show me that in the Bible. Matter of fact, matter of fact, he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, 10, and 11, he said, Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. That's people that have sex and ain't married. Nor adulterers. That's people that are married and have sex, but not to, they're not married to each other. Nor adulterers. That's people that love football more than they love church. Boy, God. Nor effeminate, that's people that are homosexuals. Nor thieves, that's people that don't pay tithe. Nor covetous, that's people that are jealous of people that do pay tithe. Nor revilers, that's people that start trouble everywhere they go. Nor extortioners, that's preachers that takes up offering for the evangelist and don't give it to him. Amen. <laughs> he said, none of these shall enter their end. Y'all, if that was all there was to it, I'd be in trouble because they were some of those things that I was guilty of. Are you still with me? Let me clear it up. A feminine wasn't one of them. I'm like my daddy. My daddy said, I don't understand that spirit. He said, I ain't never seen but one ugly woman and she looked pretty good. Amen, amen. <laughs> but he said, and such were some of you. That means some of you were homosexuals. Some of you were adulterers. Some of you were drunkards. Drunkards, one of them. Some of you were fornicators. Some of you were idolaters. Some of you were drunkards, revilers, extortioners. And if it stopped right there, we'd be in trouble. He said, and such were some of you. But you've been washed. But you've been sanctified. But you've been justified by the Spirit. He said, by the Spirit of God. In other words, I don't care how deep in transgender homosexuality you are, the Spirit can move upon the waters and turn you around today. Amen. So as I, I end this service, I'm going to end it two ways. We need the Spirit to move upon the waters. And I'm going to break it down as, we, as they come and get ready to worship. I'm going to break it down. I want us to stop and ask God to move upon the waters of our flesh. Now, every time I preach, the altar's open. I never preach without the altar be open because that's where it's confirmed. But So the altar's open. If you need to come to the altar, it's open. But you can make an altar right where you're at, too. I'm going to ask God to move upon the waters of our flesh. 
And if there's something you're struggling with, let the Spirit move upon the waters. Am I making sense? If there's something you're thinking, you ought not to think. The suicide rate. I had a school superintendent call me the other day said, we've had three suicides in our school. Can you come and have an assembly at our school? Of course I can. And we went and spoke to 2,500 students. And I ain't saying what we done worked, but I am saying they ain't had a suicide since. That's been three years ago. Wow. Wow. The suicide rate. The second leading cause of death amongst our teenagers is suicide. The suicide rate from kids from 10 to 13 has over doubled in the last year or so. What am I saying? We got to let the spirit move upon the minds because if you get your mind right, is suicide spirit of suicide real? Yes. Most, some of you know this, most of you don't. 10 years ago, Debbie and I, Debbie and I lost our son, Travis. He was 26 years old, a drunk man that was going to commit suicide, hid behind a construction barrel on the side of the highway and just randomly picked my boy's truck and, and jumped out in front of him to commit suicide. Travis swerved. It didn't kill the man, but, but it killed Travis. And, oh, oh, man, I struggled with everything you could struggle with. I was on a bulldozer. I, had, I got a little farm, and I was on a bulldozer clearing out some land. I, if you go by if you go by 2416, 203, that's our farm. You can see pastures with cows in it. It used to be woods. And I had me a bulldozer and was clearing it. And a spirit came on me. I don't know why I'm telling this, but, but hear me. A spirit came on me that, that I needed to go be with Travis and let Debbie stay with KC and my grandboy. I didn't have but one grandson at the time. And, and so I shut the bulldozer down and went to where she was and said, Debbie, I got to go be with Travis. We cried and we prayed and I hugged her and kissed her and told her I, I just got to go be with Travis. I just know that's what God wants me to do because Travis is up there alone and Casey will have you and I believe heaven's as real as a city down the road. So I'm just going to go there and, and I, hey, I'll see you when you get there. And so I got on the bulldozer to commit suicide. I did. I aimed the bulldozer at a big old tree so it would choke down because I didn't want to kill nobody. And I was just going to step on the track of the bulldozer and let it run over me. And my life would be done. Everybody would bring casseroles to Debbie and, and, and everything would be all right. And I'll be with Travis because I needed to be with him as he walked across some of the things he was crossing to get to the king. That was my mindset. So I got the bulldozer lined up to a tree and I stand up to step on the track and my boot's hitting the track of the bulldozer. And all I got to do is put my pressure on it and my life's done. I'm going to be in heaven with Travis and the Holy Spirit moved upon the waters of my mind. And this is what he said. He said, the only thing worse than you being on earth and your boy with me is you being in hell and your boy with me because if you can't trust me to live, don't you trust me to die. Now, now hear me, hear me. I stopped the bulldozer, got off, knelt down and prayed. And when I prayed, my phone rang. Most of you don't know this person because y'all are young. But some of y'all will know Steve Brock. Steve Brock's a famous gospel singer. He traveled with Benny Hinn all over the world. He's a friend of mine. He lost his son to a drunk driver, hit him head on. And, 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 and he called me. My, my phone's ringing while I'm asked, thanking God for sparing me. And my phone rings and I answered it. I see it. Steve Brock. I said, hey, Brother Steve. He said, George, what just happened? I said, what do you mean? He said, two hours ago, God told me to go to the prayer closet and I ain't done nothing but pray for you for two hours and he just told me everything's all right. I want to know what happened. You know what happened? The Spirit moved upon the water. Whoa. Whoa. So what am I saying? Oh my God, have mercy on the the Lord. What am I saying? I can tell you a whole lot of stories there's a CD back there I'll give you called Handfuls on Purpose. That's our journey from when Travis died till I took 30 days to get back in the pulpit. But I got, I'm going to share one more thing with you. Let me share one more thing with you. Josh, this is, I want you to hear this, Josh. Y'all got powerful worship here. And, 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 and listen, listen, I go, I, I go to a lot of churches and, and, you know, the glory of God was he filled the house with smoke. And smoke leaves a scent. No matter how good you wash it, it leaves a scent. And I've seen people try to cover up the scent of the smoke with the perfume of performance. Y'all don't have that here. He touches the garment. Are you still with me? Amen. But the first Sunday, not the first Sunday, but the next Sunday, 
after Travis died. I didn't want to go to the church I pastored. I didn't want to go to the church that anybody knew me. We loaded up and we went to St. Simon's. My brother got us got a big old uh, uh, condo back there for all 27 of us, all, all of us, all my family, nephews, brothers, sisters. And we all went down there. Well, I'm going to go to church. I think you got to go to church. I think if you're a Christian, uh, that means Christ-like. And Jesus went to the Sabbath on the temple. I think you ought to go to church if you want to be like him. And so we got to go to church. Where are we going to go? So there's a charismatic church on St. Simon's Island. And, and well, let's go there. Nobody knows us. And, and, and we come in and sit at the back of the church because I didn't want nobody to know me and I didn't want to know nobody. I didn't want to hear no foolishness. I didn't want to hear nothing. I just need a word from God. We get there and they announce. Almost made me mad. I almost, <laughs> they got up there and said, they got up there and said, our pastor's gone today. We got a professor going to bring the word. He's going to talk to us about evolution. I said, living. <laughs> Some of y'all will get that in a minute. Amen, <laughs> amen, amen. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, doggone it. I didn't need to hear that kind of word. And they were doing the worship. Now hear me, Josh. Hear me, praise team. Hear me, band. They were doing the worship. And the guy that was leading the worship, the guy that was leading the worship, brother, can you stand up a minute and let me stand behind that piano right there? I don't know how to play the piano. I mean, I know, I know somebody else here don't know how to play the piano. Amen. <laughs> she went and took lessons, but she never learned. I'm kidding, sister. I'm kidding, sister Fonda. They don't know it's you. Amen. <laughs> the man was leading worship from behind the piano. My son's name was Travis. Now, now hear me because I hope this makes sense. He's leading the worship. I'm sitting in the back thinking, I really wish I wasn't here. I come for a word. God told me I was going to get a word today. And they're going to talk to me about two amoebas in a mud puddle. And I don't want to hear it. And so he's playing. And he's playing good worship. I'm, I'm relating to the worship. It's good. It's right on time. And then he He stops. Again, my son's name was Travis. And this is what he said. He said, me and Travis was walking down the road yesterday. Now, Travis ain't a popular name. I named my boy Travis because my favorite movie was Old Yeller. And that little boy's name was Travis. That's where I got it. How many people, their favorite movie is Old Yeller? Amen. So, I'm, me and Travis was walking down the road yesterday. And Travis stopped me. And Travis said, there's going to be somebody in church in the morning, which was that morning, that's made up their mind. They're never going to tell the story again. Well, I'd made up my mind. I'd never preach again. My wife bumped me in the side. I said, that ain't me. There's 1,500 people here. That ain't me. And then he went on. He said, it's a man. Sir, I'm talking to you. Oh, that narrowed it down to 35%. So now Debbie's sure enough hitting me in the side. And so I'm listening. He's got my attention. He said, so I want to dedicate this song. I want to dedicate this song to you, sir, wherever you're at, at the request of Travis. I dedicate this song to you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. It goes on to the chorus. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. You know what happened? The Spirit moved upon the waters of the music minister's mind, and he changed everything because the Spirit was moving on the waters of my heart at the back of the, we need a move of, we need a move of the Spirit. So if you will, stand with me all over this, this place. I feel his presence. I feel his presence. I don't just say that. I feel the presence of one mightier than I am in here today. I'm going to ask you, they're going to play or sing softly and 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 because I want you to be able to stay in tune. I won't worship, but I want you to be able to stay in tune for what God wants to do this morning. If you're in this building, if you're in this building, and you're struggling with something in the flesh, you're struggling with something in the flesh, let's pray a prayer. 
Let's pray a prayer for the Spirit to move upon the waters of our, of our flesh. There's things you ain't going to be able to quit without the Spirit moving on your flesh. I built, I say I built, at Unity we built, when I pastored, we built two drug rehabs. Only 57% of the people that go through our drug rehabs get delivered. I thought that was bad because, hey, that means 43% are still leaving addicted until I looked at the secular statistics. One to three percent in secular rehabs get delivered. You know why? Because the spirit ain't moving. There's things you can't quit that you can't do without the spirit moving. So if you're in this building and you would say, God, I need you to move on the waters of my flesh. Again, the altar's always open. But would you just lift your hands up right now? Oh, God, I pray. Oh, God, I pray that your spirit move upon our flesh this morning. Somebody needs to be praying. Ah, you might need to be praying quietly because nobody might not need to know what you're going through, what you're doing. That's okay. He knows. He said confess your faults one to another, but your sins to him. So right now, talk to him about the move of his, of his spirit on the waters of your flesh. Oh, my God. Father, there's somebody here struggling with something so hard. Oh, they'll, 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 they'll see, they'll, it'll seem like they delivered. And they'll do good for a few days, maybe a week. But then, God, it's right back. It's right back. God, do a permanent work. Oh, do a work right now. Let the Spirit move upon the waters of our flesh. Oh, God, let the Spirit move upon the waters of our mind. The waters of our mind. God, let me know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let it be known, God. Let me know. You said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Think on things that are lovely. Think on things that are honest. Think on things that are of good report. God, change my stinking thinking to be like you. Move upon the waters of my mind. Move upon the waters of my heart, God. Every head bowed, every eye closed for just a second. I don't know. I don't know. I shared that story a while ago about, about me standing in for somebody and asking them to forgive me. And I don't know what God's doing. He's God. I don't know why he made that light on the first day and the sun on the third. But the Lord just prompted me right then that there's somebody here that I need to do the same thing with this morning. I don't know who you are. It may be one, it may be four or five, I don't know. But somebody here, I want to stand in for that person you cannot forgive. And it's in your heart so deep. It's in your heart so deep that it's going to take a move of the Spirit on the waters of your heart to get it out. And if you're here this morning and there's something in your heart that you can't let go of, you can't forgive, it's a root of bitterness. Whew. God wants me to stand in for that person and ask you to forgive me this morning. So if I'm talking to you, come down here right now. And let me just let me just do that before we go any further. I'll just hold it open a minute. It's up to you to come. But if you're a man, or woman, young man, young woman, and you got to forgive somebody, they done you wrong. They done you wrong. There's no doubt about that. But you got to forgive them. Just. Come.